is the math of figuring out how strong is NA and who is the strong team in NA? It's like you had a puzzle, and we started it at the very beginning of HCC, and we decided to put the pieces together. And we, you know, we did, did we the, do the outline. Edge pieces first? Well, you always do the edge, right? right yeah. Standard puzzle strategy. Okay. You always start with the edge. You You've dingus. got me so far. Then we decide to fill in bits and pieces here and there. The really easy things to figure out, like, oh, there's only one blue segment on this puzzle. We got that figured out. That's the sky. Yeah. yeah, and we did that. We got it all done. And then halfway through, somebody just <laughs> flips the table. Done. It's out. We don't care. And we're, we're trying to rebuild the picture. And I have no idea what it looks like. They took the box cover, they put it on fire. Everything about it. You just did me a real big fright in there. Uh, let's go into game three in the map. That scared me, man. The boom? The t table flipping or what? <laughs> yeah. Just, I was so engrossed in the story and I didn't know where it was going. DJ Gilly Goat is actually, uh, you know, one of those panic goats that just kind of flops over every time she gets scared. Today I learned, man. <laughs> Team Freedom. Picking the battleground with Tempo Storm losing the last one. They picked first pick. And now Team Freedom might do Tempo Storm the real big frighten because they've picked Battlefield of Eternity. Historically, not a great spot for Tempo Storm to fight. It's not doing too hot. And you uh, you hit me with a Snapple fact over the break here. Can you can you let the viewers at home in on your little Snapple fact? About the renovation of strategy? No, I got to be the bearer of bad news. No, but I don't know that a team the team would want us to share this. All right, fair yeah. deal. We're, we're, we're skipping it. We'll, we're, we'll circle we'll do back. It live. We'll circle back, team. All right, here we Just go. Just in case. Malfurion and, ta and Tassadar band. Malfurion and the Tassadar? So. Ooh. No, never mind. All right, Great Main's going to be the first pick for Temple Storm. Not. Surprising for Temple Storm, weird for North America. I love it. I, I, I'm a big fan mm. of it as well. Graymane returning. He, he's in full force by this point. It's not even. Murden Leeming. We've already talked about Leeming's success in North America so far or lack thereof. She's a big old egg out of nine. No, nine games. Yep. Even if she somehow wins this, that means that's the saddest part. Even if Lee Ming wins this game, she, in fact, has earned herself a 10% win rate. <laughs> 10%. You know who climbed his way out of 10% at the beginning of part one, though? Tychus. Really? Yeah. 10%. He was at nine, I think. He was one out of 13, whatever that percentage is. I'm not even going to pretend like I know how to do that math. Well, I do know how to do it, but I can't do it in my head. OK, let's be honest. I know. <laughs> Anyways, he was struggling, and yeah. he made it out. He, he did. He, he redeemed. Almost, he was almost at 50. He was pretty much at 50. You know, that, that's better than I would have expected. Two more picks. Is it Arthas again? A new Barak for sure. Karzim. For Tempo Storm, but with the Malfurion huh. ban. Not that crazy, considering, again, we were just so conveniently reminded that Tempo Storm is yet to touch the Lucio yeah. here in part one yet. So figuring that Team Freedom would take a support in their next round, and if Tempo didn't get one, that was a little too far down the support choke for Tempo Storm to feel comfortable with. Freedom for their ban, what stands out the most? You have the Nubarak to deal with the Li Ming, Grey Ming, Karzim on the race. Uh, because you picked a Karzim, I'd be more worried about your backliner than your front, unless I think there's something Absolutely, I cannot deal with in my next two picks. How scared is Freedom of Abathur in Battlefield of Eternity? Pretty, they, oh man. So like, because it hasn't ever shown up in North America, I would say none. But is there a place to be, I guess it actually did. Didn't, did we, yeah, see, we I saw think one game. Yeah, there was one game, but I can't remember who played it. It was either No Tomorrow or Freedom themselves, wasn't it? Hold on. My I, friend. I've got this too. I just, you know, it I wasn't just. wasn't freedom. Not no tomorrow either. But somebody did. Was it Beast Up? This is how we spend the rest of the draft figuring out. It wasn't Superstars? No Beast Up. It was Beast Up. No. No Beast Up. Well. Somebody 
Somebody played it. Boys and girls at home. Somewhere. Somebody has played it. Uh, I mean, it was a go-to strategy for a long time in Korea. Yes, it in fact is scary in the right composition and in the right hands, but it, it hasn't shown in North America, so I'm going to say probably not. The Dahaka band seems a bit out of place, which leads to a, an Arthas picked up here for Team Freedom. Well, you can postulate that Team Freedom is going to pick another warrior. They Almost all their games have been two warriors, except uh, the just one or two, and if Tempo Storm don't want to allow Dot Haka to have as easy a time split soaking, that strategy has gained traction in North America quite a bit. Who does Tempo want with their new Barak Greyman? You don't want to run either of them solo most of the time. On Battlefield of Eternity, it's a map you can get away with solo and new more often than. I don't, it's not even fair to say more often than not, but it's more forgiving there than running it on a different map. But you always typically want it with one, but with Tyrael and Murden gone, nobody else synergizes with Arthas those. as well. Yeah, it's just there nothing. There he is. Oh, baby, Alarak! Yes? Are you excited or what? Yes! I'm I not, love Alarak on Battlefield of Eternity. You know, I'm glad somebody does. That's all I got. That's that's how I think I'll put that. I'm glad someone does. I, I'm still kind of like, you know, on the just Alarak not even once train, you know? What? He's like so straightforward and one tricky on his way to approach every fight, every Immortal phase that I just, I'm every time I see him, I'm like, really? Well, he lends to great defense around yes. an immortal. And what better way to stall long term for Abathur to do his thing yeah. than to be the best at defending? Be the best defender you can be. And what? Ready to roll out MVP Black's comp. Oh my. <laughs> I am so excited. What better way? To, uh, you know, be a defense-dominated team with an Abathur split-soaking than to just get Sergeant Hammered. A perfect response coming out from Freedom. Just going, well, you want to sit on top of the Your Immortal and you want to defend all day, but Hammer's just going to hang out in the middle and start shooting you. So you got to choose one or the other. Alderac has no threat when chasing down the, the Sergeant Hammer the entire time. As long as they post up anywhere near those four rocks that we talked about in the center, whenever we see Sergeant Hammer on BOE, I'm sold on Freedom again. Yeah, I love both comps. Uh, Sergeant Hammer, Lee Ming, there is a reason why this comp is, I, I say the MVP Black comp, but realistically drafted by nearly every team in Korea on Battlefield of Eternity, at least the top ones. Lee Ming and Sergeant Hammer have such great poke. Sergeant Hammer controls the center area because she has those rocks to siege up around. It puts a lot for Alarak and Anubarak to try to drag her into stuns and be able to take her out. And as long as she takes resistant, then anytime she's stunned in siege mode, she's going to get 50 armor for a few seconds. And, and you know, the Abathur pickup explains a lot more with the Dahaka band that we seemed a little bit out of place. Mm -hmm. But it's just, yeah, I, I just feel like the leaming Sergeant Hammer, the threat that's going to impose... You know, we've seen Sergeant Hammer picked in North America on this map once in a while, but it never feels as impactful like we see in Korea. But I feel like if if we see the same approach for freedom as we see out of the Korean region, I don't see any reason for them not to win this draft. Out of the risk, once again, that Tempo Storm decided to take. Well, Tempo Storm has yet to win a game on Battlefield of Eternity in HGC. Let's see if they could pull it off with an Alarak. And an Abathur. And an Abathur. Things have, sh you know, shifted in North America. I was going to say shook, and then I just realized it didn't work that well, and then it just ended up as a sh the whole time, as, as, as if I was asking you to be quiet, you know? Yeah, not a good sound to drag on for a while. Nothing good comes from that. Level ones. You know, everything is what you would expect here so far, except maybe, maybe you could argue Greymane level one. 
Uh, just not go, going for the perfect aim, going for more flask build on BOE. You can make an argument for going into the wolf heart build. Leaming has chosen force armor. It will help tremendously with Greymane and Alarak. However, it does mean that there is the possibility that should fights go long around immortal phases, which Tr Tempo Storm will be trying to do to get the most out of that Apather pick. Uh, she may find herself down and not being able to regenerate mana in time. She doesn't have Power Hungry or even Astral Presence. So watch for that for Dainsby, how he can control and keep track of his mana. First combo goes out, follow up immediate from Fury. First blood. That's what Tempo Storm needs here with this composition. Last time I criticized them for a, you know, risk in a draft that maybe they didn't need to take. They proceeded to Throw it in my face, and Freedom's face for that matter, in under eight minutes, winning the first game here in the series on Kerstalo. And this is a battleground where you can easily do that. You win the first immortal phase convincingly, you get a huge level advantage, you get a fully shielded immortal with your heroic abilities when your opponents are at, say, level eight, and then you can just win the game. It's really nice, you know, when the stars kind of align like that. Temple Depends Storm. which side of that you are on, but I would agree. Temple Storm has kept the pressure on bottom and what is a 4-1 split, as long as you count the Aptor hat. And, you know, Alarok's kind of been holding its own in the, the two versus one. Freedom going for what we've seen more of in North America by whenever you see the soul inner trying to 2v1 into them and saying that'll make up for the weaker the weaker half of the map, a weaker laning setup that they have. Either way, Temple Storm pulls ahead over the first couple of minutes. The Immortal spawns, and Freedom quickly just gets damage into it, along with Tempo. Looks like it's going to be almost at dead even. So we're trading at the first half of this first Immortal phase. The second half, we know we're going to be in defensive positions. Temple Storm heads to the mid to see if they can catch anybody out. Zagreb zoning, and now Tempo Storm is willing to defend over theirs. Yeah, and that's where the Abathur is going to gain the value. The question is, how much threat can Nazmus get out? There's going to be the first combo. Newberg got the follow-up, but Nazmus is just fine here. Also, one thing we failed to note is at level one. Yeah, no uh, resistant, advanced artillery. So bonus damage to long-range enemies. So 10% faster on the race and damage done to majority of the people that Hammer's hitting, depending on Siege Up and not, and a lot of other weird variables. But more importantly than anything, just the fact that she can die pretty easy now to the Alderac and New Barak combo. Originally, if it, uh, new, or Alderac went into combo, then that is the, she would be fine. But when the minute a New Barak goes for the follow-up, it's like, oh, thanks for the 50% damage reduction. Yeah, maybe Team Freedom felt like there weren't enough stuns to justify that, but there are immortal stuns that you can drag into, even though Alarak doesn't have any of his own, and Nubarak has plenty to make up for that. Oh man, Cattle is just all by himself, all the way isolated, and he is gonna get caught out from Insomnia there with the Howling Glass Fury. Gets a good knockup, so he'll be able to get a little bit of room for himself. The race is still on, Hammer Split, good combo coming up from the Alarak. Zugrug gets the heal up from Collusion, drops the Healing Ward, and he is going to be fine. He makes it out. This is going to be the first Immortal Phase going over to Sergeant Hammer and the rest <laughs> of Freedom. That is who deserves credit for that Immortal Phase, Nazmus. This sitting thing. in this central area of all of the rocks. That was more of what we expected yes, out of Sergeant Hammer. It just, you go up in mid and you go, this is mine now. Uh, and if you would like to come hang out with me, you can. And if you don't, I'll take the Immortal and he'll hang out with me. So this makes suddenly the Sergeant Hammer on BOE's, you know, it, it looks a little bit more of what we're used to seeing as a pick is, is in general what I'm getting across here. Right. They're, but the last time we saw Sergeant Hammer, it was beast up and they were against a Chromie. So harder to figure out the placement because her range is so long. That's not the case here. Nazmus having free reign of the center, at least in the first phase, they will get two towers and a gate. Arthas. Sieging in the top versus Apather. Team Freedom with a slight experience advantage, but it's nothing to sneeze at. The important thing is, though, it makes sure that Team Freedom doesn't get far behind with that first phase so that they lose outright with the second. Yeah, uh, you know, that Temple Storm with an Apather comp once more is not finding themselves miles ahead of their opponents, right? Uh, it, it's going to be the biggest thing here. This is going to be a good silence. Good follow-up damage there. Telekinesis being stalled out to make sure they get the kill, and that is going to be one 
dead dwarf. Temple Storm gets, you know, some more small leads here in the downtime, and that's all they want. They're here. They're more of a late game composition. They really are. Freedom with that hammer pick kind of said that they wanted to control the early and mid game. Late game, it still looks good for them, but it's no Abathur composition. Team Freedom taking a page out of King Caffeine's playbook. Picking uh, Sledgehammer once again. Mixing it up, Full though. Full Stormbolt build. Not going with Ironforge momentum at seven, actually going for the Pierce. That'll allow nobody to be able to body block the Pierce onto the actual Immortal itself. Uh, but then, more importantly than anything, it will actually hurt his overall damage output onto the race itself because Ironforge momentum, the auto attacks would yes. then lead to more Qs. So uh, a bit of a trade-off. More importantly than anything, it just hurts his team fight. Having Piercing Stormbolt really almost never really gives you two stuns, and even when it is, one of the targets usually don't matter. But more importantly, just the lack of reset onto the W for that self-sustained post-13 with healing stat. There is a lot of melee, though, on Tempo Storm side, so maybe hoping that they can get a Karzim as well as an Anubarak, or Grey Mane as well as Anub, or Alarak even. But yeah, it not having um, Thunder Burn, too, means that healing static is less of uh, something that you can rely on for your self-sustain. What I'm looking at is death coil build for self-sustain for Arthas. Sometimes when we see this, it ends up with Cindergosa, and Cindergosa could greatly enable an immortal if Team Freedom's able to pick up another one with their heroic abilities. Yeah, they already have the Sergeant Hammer, which can kind of, you know, push an advantage whenever the map objective is not up, and when it is, it grains it. Wow, the Stormbolt cool. into the damage of the Immortal Fury is going to be fine for now. Uh, but so essentially, Sergeant Hammer can kind of do what Cindergosa does naturally, but it's whether or not they feel like they need the Cindergosa to, you know, kind of just further it, make it go rather than just starting a fire. Do they want to just start an entire bonfire out in the middle of nowhere? That was a great burrow spot. Finds Nazbus as well as Zugrug, who is low on health, has to step back to allow his tray and Collusion to heal back up. This lets Tempo Storm step in and start poking down at uh, Belleth, the red immortal for Team Freedom. And they need that poke because so far, the poke with Sergeant Hammer and Li Ming is what we expected it to be, be favoring Team Freedom in these poke fights. It is exactly what we thought it would be, and that is annoying, hard to deal with. Yes. This is the pressure that these two can provide on BOE. But the Abathur is doing its thing the entire time, and it's paying off. Tempo Swarm is now a level ahead, pre-10, thanks to the Abbey. And that will allow them to, once they pick up the 10, all in this Immortal and get it for free. So that is what we see. And the downtime Freedom now is going to be looking to pick up their 10s and make sure, you know, Tempo Storm doesn't get the push with the Immortal itself before they have Heroics. Halfway point will let Team Freedom catch up with Heroics as fast as they can, but they're still not there, and Tempo Storm has gotten the halfway point to finish. So now jumping back in, trying to clear out the rest of this Immortal so that they can have that push and stay away from dealing with Sergeant Hammer and an Immortal, let alone possibly a Syndragosa on top of that. Deadly Charge over Counter-Strike. Seen that a total of uh, zero times. Never. Well, Jung Ha, when he plays Alarak on occasion, will pick it at level 20. Yeah, but, but still gets Counter Strike that, at level one. That, first, that's or not 10. the same thing as taking yes, an yeah. attack. That is a very different beast because then it's situational. I can see that argument. I have never seen Deadly Charge just taken at 10. He's going for the flank too. You see him up above. He's going to look for the drop. Oh, man. Song. He's looking for it. Do it. He's Checking gonna dive in. the hammer. He's gonna dive the hammer. No way. Cinder Ghost is there. Blunt force gun to all oh, the lines Let's... collide. Oh. No. oh man. That feel when That's done. We're all fine here. Things are good. We're good. So Cindragosa, Blunt Force Gun, and Disintegrate. The lines of damage for Team Freedom. Nasmus sieged up. Gonna get damage out there. Zugrug diving in. The Ooh, blood force gun. The Syndra goes at two, but everyone's too far away from the rest and Cocoon bought time from Collusion. So this chase will amount to not too much unless Zugrug can land the piercing bolt. Gets two. They're catching up. They're trying to chase him down here, but it just feels like the fort is too close. And it is Tempo Storm is going to be fine. Maybe even look to try and 
bait a fight now, knowing that they're next to the comfort of that fort. Abathur on the map, looking for any side soak in the downtime. As Temple Storm, Freedom just managed to pick up their heroics. Temple Storm is now looking towards the 13 talent here, and it just feels like this is only going to get worse and worse, really, for Freedom in this game. Because where we are now is where you never want to be for Freedom against an Abathur on BOE. It's when both of the forts are down because... So we know on Battlefield of Eternity and Braxis Holdout, the distance between the fort to the keeps is actually insane. Yes. Which now, that what that means is the minion waves are more likely to build up and meet in those areas to where they aren't just dying and flopping over and experiences disappearing. Which what that means is Abathur gets almost double to triple the amount of waves where he can casually soak while then ulting, joining a fight, and then soaking later. He has more territory to play around with, and it usually means the rotations to be able to gank an Abathur if he's out of position are that much more slower and articulated to the opponent. So both forts down, you have a talent tier advantage, and it's on a map like BOE where the distance is huge. Your gank potential is non-existent. Abathur pretty much has free reign over the map and really gets to he just becomes that much more oppressive. And with the composition of Team Freedom, it gets even worse. They want to be able to sit around and poke. They have two great poking heroes and can win out in that regard, but they won't be able to do that because that basically allows Abathur to not only continue to continue that experience advantage, but potentially even do damage to keep structures, which you don't want to let happen on Battlefield of Eternity. That was a cursed bullet value we saw on Arthas right there. Got a lot of damage out. With the zoning of Temple Storm after they pick up the camp. The Shaman camp is going to force members of Freedom to respond to it. The rest of the tempo is going to start on to this immortal race. This Fury is scouting out. It's going to be halftime show kicked off by Tempo as there is nobody contesting it. A little poke here and there from Freedom while they are pushing out this bottom lane. Maybe even looking to siege on the fort, knowing that they need 13 talents, but Tempo Storm showing up some. Looking for the right combo. Telekinesis pulls Nazmus out of Discord Strike. Blunt Force Gun hits Fury. So far, not that much damage, though. He steps back to safety. Yeah, that was not the ideal BFG. Uh, I know we don't see very many of those, but I promise you that was not what you want. Only hitting one target and being a noob, he took Almost no damage, and they're going to be fine here. Defensive positioning for Freedom, but the entire time, keep in mind, Abathur's doing its thing, so Freedom feels like they have the upper hand as they go in for, well, more to get dragged into that combo. Yes, Arthur, Arthas is in the top lane trying to defend and soak that, but the minute that Freedom get all of their members here, they're going to need to go if they want to get a fight before this immortal phase gets out of hand for them. Zuggerg knows that he, he jumps in, Caught the luck using the clone to zone away and do what damage they can. But Sindragosa has hit. Team Freedom trying to strike. Temple Storm is on retreat. Cattle's oom, but he makes it out. Stormbolt does land. Zugrug on to Zalm. Dainsky moves up there for the combo. Posting up is going to be Nazmus with that Sergeant Hammer. Looking towards the Immortal for now as Temple Storm backs out looking to get that tap on that midwell. How much does Team Freedom get done before Tempo Storm reinitiates? They've all healed back up, about half of the shielding down, and Team Freedom move back into defensive positioning once again, but they've used a lot of abilities. Combo hits, Blunt Force Gun, it's a lot of members, and pushes back Tempo Storm long enough for Ancestral Healing to keep Zugrug healthy. The four-man BFG did set the health bars low, but it doesn't look like Freedom is moving up to be able to capitalize on that, meaning, meaning that they are only going to be that much farther behind. Meanwhile, Avatar is only further the lead here to almost two levels on top of Freedom, as you can see them grasping for what feels like the last bit of oxygen left in their game in this game. Yeah, it really does feel like it comes down to this immortal fight specifically. If Team Freedom can't either take down this immortal or at least get the shields down significantly, or win a team fight, Tempo Storm may put this into an irrecoverable position if not take out Team Freedom because the longer this is going now, Team Freedom are still at 13 and yet oh. Tempo Storm are almost at 16. They've, they're have they at 15 now and they're working their way toward those 16 talents. Six, Cinder Gosa comes up up in six seconds. Zugrug is fine as the passive goes off. Cawthon trying to get the rest of the damage out. Tempo Storm looks like they might move up and all in, but they get the damage onto Sergeant Hammer. Nazmus gets deleted there with that DPS coming up from the Greymane and this is Tempo Storm 
pulling ahead even farther. They should be able to finish off the 310 health left on this Immortal. They're going to be able to pick up 16s, and Abathur's pressure outward is just too high. Amazing job from Cawthon Luck. Not only did he, of course, do damage to the Immortal, but he caused chaos in the ranks of Team Freedom, and everyone moving back was so scared about dealing with that and stopping the Immortal push from happening for Tempo that Nasmus got caught without the protection that you would like from a double warrior with Sergeant Hammer. So now getting that kill, Team Freedom is everyone's back up and ready for the defense. This Immortal, the shielding was taken down very well. There's only about a quarter of shielding there for it, but big problem is 16 for Tempo. Yeah, that is, you know, it's, a, it's a, it could be a game losing problem. We might put it as that much. It could be fatal. That's pretty good. The shields here have taken a bit of damage, but they're still existing, which means we're not in melee range yet. Combo goes out onto Zugrug, didn't land, BFG drops, hits three, June with one, you know, W really does heal up enough. Nazmus sieges up, gets cocooned, the rest of the members of Freedom try to break him out, they do, but it loses their keep. Temple Storm looks like they walk away pleased. Double gray main, secures a keep, Gotham will even run back for a bit on that clone, doing whatever damage he can for the rest of the duration. Keep down, 17 to 14, a three level lead, really two but a massive lead nonetheless. Freedom just, you know, they gotta wait for their 16. I, I obviously feels like they are now beginning to respect what the Avatar can do to Battlefield of Eternity. You know, after watching that last Immortal phase happen, you could see that they had moments where they're trying like, okay, we have to try and make something happen now. And then if it didn't work, they were just like, well, what do we do now? Abther is only making this that much worse, which should mean during the next Immortal phase, when they do manage to pick up the 16, Freedom, if they are learning from their mistakes, just all ins. And then when it doesn't work, they wait about three seconds and then they all in again, right? Just stop with this allowing Abather to do what he does best, which is really just get an advantage if you can buy any amount of time. Especially because the last phase, they were very hesitant to leave each other. They have a Sergeant Hammer, they want to be able to defend, and they aren't don't really necessarily have the, anybody who can roam efficiently and clear out the lanes without giving somebody up in the composition. And now they've lost a keep. So the pressure is 20-fold for Tempo Storm to put on to Team Freedom. But here is 16 and an Immortal in 15. What it, Temple Storm is doing is they're double stacking a camp on the bottom too. While the catapults are pressuring bottom, they're stacking this camp and then the wait until it moves up a little bit, be able to stack the bottom camp, and that buys a free halftime show, or it forces Freedom to back out, respond to bottom, which then should lead to them being able to get a pick. All the members of Freedom are kind of split all over, and if they don't, Apatha goes, thanks for the escort of catapults and my pressure for my Locust onto your core now. It's a time game for Tempo. So far, Freedom posting up, getting ready to defend their immortal, but Tempo Storm are just going to buy that time, just wait for that moment you mentioned, oh. and it's Rhaegar who's going down to defend. That is not the guy you want to rotate. Tempo Storm, see this? They are gonna move up. They did. Almost took too much damage there on Psalm, but he made it out. Rhaegar is still showing on bottom. When is Tempo gonna move up? That graduating range from Hammer is, uh, you can see it gaining respect <laughs> as Nazmus <laughs> goes, uh, are you having fun? Because I am. Further and further back, her tempo storm pushed. That's another reason why Sergeant Hammer is a uh, dominant pick on Battlefield of Eternity is she can hold on to a lot of space. Probius is a uh, zoning hero in uh, Heroes of the Storm. Did you know that, Gilly? Uh, know that. Well, I'm here to teach you Sergeant Hammer zones, uh, but just like all of the map. Yeah, about half of it. Uh, <laughs> the central region, at least. Yes, thank you for showing us the fully graduated range. Beside New Rock. It's not the elementary range; it's the graduated. Dun, 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 dun. What do you think? What do you think she graduated with? If range was a degree. What level of degree did Sergeant Hammer graduate with? I'm giving with? her a bachelor's, a bachelor's degree in zoning. And we'll see how much, uh, what kind of a score she got, a grade. 
He's on starting her to graduate it out. So that's like an F. She just got past F, moved into D. Next should be an average. There it is. There's the burrow. <gasps> Quickly forces the disengage. The silence combo goes on the Zugroth, but the Ancestral is there for the last tick of HP. Cindergosa, you know, casually just Cindergosaing on by. Good oh, Alarak stun. The amazing combo. Insomnia was in trouble. The health bars of Team Freedom falling. Cawthon with the clone Got trying it. to get that first kill. Cattle moved up there. You can see him seeing everybody's HP so low. He wanted the Flask Dream, but they were just a bit too far out there. Abathur has gotten some pressure towards the core with the Catapults. Not so much focus onto that top keep. Abathur, I feel like, should be able to whittle away the HP of that a little bit better than he has. Nasmus as the sole defender for now. It's going to allow Freedom to be able to pick up this camp. Team Freedom are getting in the camp, but Tempo Storm are doing work to the health bar yeah. of the Immortal. I'm glad somebody else had force to that issue. I was just going to casually let it go by. No, but I, it, yeah. was, it, it was uh, troublesome. And now stuns are hitting. There's no Ancestral this time to save the life of Murden. And Tempo Storm get the first of what could be many kills, the end kills even, if they can get this strong of an Immortal. It was just one warrior. There is two warriors for Team Freedom. Granted, there's not Army of the Dead to keep Insomnia alive, but he does have this Death Coil build. Halfway point here, Tempo Storm. Abathur looking to get 20, while Tempo Storm looked to get a very well-shielded Immortal. There we see the graduating range has been set. Tempo Storm gets BFG'd real good there. Good knockup from Fury on Insomnia. Cawthon even burnt the Heroic there. Two catapults building onto the core of freedom as they are looking to play very, very defensive. Those should not get too much damage out yet. It's only about when you get three catapults does it provide enough to where it's like, all right, this is going to be damage 100%. Muradino will be back now. Can try to clear those out before rejoining his team. I mean, he's got the tools. Piercing Bolt with the Sledgehammer. Should be able to about one shot him, you know? Yeah, the problem again is the talent and experience advantage. This whole time, Abathur has been soaking happily to get Tempo Storm level 20 Storm tier talents to enable Tempo Storm to execute with this phase. So what Freedom has failed to do with the Sergeant Hammer is it feels like play offense and defense at the same time when it comes to Sergeant Hammer's positioning. Here we see a bit more off to the side, just out of, once again, the fear of people kind of diving onto him. He drew out a cocoon there. A giant cocoon too from the sieged up position. But Murden, just as he came back, is taken out. There's no way Collusion gets away from this. Blunt Force Gun it may do damage, but Nazmus is going to take a lot to the face, too. It's Somnia, at the very least, trying to do oh. as much as he can. And, uh, granted, he's really trying to get those resets for Dainsky, but none. Li Ming, a solo defender. Not versus... even going to need it. Honestly, it's already game. Catapults on bottom are going to win the game. The question is, who survives? And the answer is, no one on the side of freedom. 62% on the core of the Catapults, the Winions, the whatever you want to call them. They're doing their job. They're winning the game, and Tempo Storm takes the lead in the series 2-1. to one. Tempo Storm defeats Team Freedom on Battlefield of Eternity. A hope for Team Freedom to be able to catch Tempo Storm at some place where Tempo didn't feel comfortable, but Tempo once again proved that they can figure out a macro-style strategy that works for them, executing their Abathur very well. Also, a lot of combos from Alarak being able to start the lockdown train to be able to get picks. Yeah, well, the coolest thing about that is both of the teams definitely didn't play North American BOE. We could see the other regions, other play styles coming in. And, and you know, Tempo Storm was the one who pulled ahead, but I, I still like what we saw from Freedom. They maybe didn't execute it flawlessly, but the fact that, you know, more consideration